G'day everyone. So I'm making this quick video today because I wanted to explain, uh, perhaps in further detail, my meaning graph, which I conceptualized about uh, two weeks ago. And it's obviously not my idea, I didn't, uh, I didn't invent it, but I took it from a couple of things I was reading, uh, most uh, specifically the stuff I was reading about positive emotion. And we link positive emotion uh, with serotonin, so satiation, so satisfaction. Uh, the idea that when I have a lot of serotonin um, pumping through my brain, I feel like everything I have is enough right now. So it's kind of happiness, the happiness um, neurotransmitter. And the other neurotransmitter uh, and hormone being dopamine, so that uh, feeling of incentive reward. If I keep going this way, I'm going to be rewarded. It's like, come this way, come this way, come this way. It's that feeling like I'm on to something. And I put together that meaning graph because it made sense to me, number one, uh, and it made sense in terms of how I could apply the idea of finding a purpose in life to simultaneously reducing anxiety. And anxiety is the emotion of uncertainty. So when we feel anxious, we tend to feel like we're not sure that what is around the proverbial corner, uh, we're not sure if that um, idea, person, place, thing, action, behavior uh, could be dangerous. So we get anxious. You know, we get anxious for a whole number of reasons. We get anxious when we um, are thinking or have to make a public speech. We get anxious when we're going on a first date. It, it's all based around the idea of uncertainty. So what I thought was really interesting about the meaning graph, and if you have a look at it, I'm going to put it up um, in one of these corners so you can kind of see it uh, as I talk here. But uh, what I really like about the idea of the meaning graph is that if you find fulfillment in your life, so you basically have a goal that you're working towards and you keep getting that dopamine rush of come this way, come this way, come this way, you're, you're continually rewarded with that positive emotion, your life will become a lot clearer and the emotion of uncertainty, anxiety will reduce. So you won't feel like everything is unpredictable and potentially scary or you know um, potentially exciting simultaneously. That's the affective valence of the unknown. The unknown, what, it, what exists in the unknown is new wisdom, so good change and danger at the same time. So that's why we have to explore the unknown because it could be good or bad. We have to keep going anyway. When you lead a fulfilling life, you are living a predictable life, which is good because we do need some stability. We do need to feel like the things we're doing are, are, are leading to a positive return. That's why people always talk about morning routines because if they set aside that time for themselves every day, they get their reading in, they get their exercise in, they get their healthy eating in, they get their eight hours of sleep in, they get their meditation in. What they're doing is giving them uh, positive emotion. It's giving them that, hey, keep coming this way, you're doing the right thing, so they keep going that way. The whole idea behind the meaning graph is this. If you envision a life for yourself, if you come up with the idea of what this incredible desired future could be like for yourself, and then you start making steps to uh, to bring that to, to, to bring that into fruition, you will be rewarded with the onset of a good chronic state of positive emotion. And that way, you won't be running towards, either consciously or subconsciously, these addictive tendencies. So I work with men predominantly. A lot of them talk to me about uh, porn addiction. And the thing about porn addiction is that it's like any other addiction, okay? It might have a stigma attached to it as well. And, you know, stigmas are a, are a different thing in and of themselves. But any addiction is associated with that quick hit of positive emotion, that quick, come here, you'll get rewarded. Eat this cookie, you'll get rewarded. Watch this porn video, you'll get rewarded. Do this thing, you'll get rewarded. You go, just literally add your own addictive behavior in there. What a lot of people fail to do when it comes to addictive tendencies, and I was obviously talking about porn there more specifically, but when it comes to addictive tendencies is that they try not to watch the porn or they try not to eat the food. They're, they're in a sense shaming the addictive tendency. What I would suggest as a counselor is that you give yourself a 
better goal, that means that you have to sacrifice that addictive tendency. So we spoke before about the meaning graph. We spoke before about how that chronic state of positive emotion, because you're come this way, come this way, come this way, you're going to get rewarded with an even better goal, is going to make you give up the smaller goal, the addictive tendency, uh, and, um, and it'll be worth it. So a very clear, easy example, okay? Uh, there's a really interesting website called Your Brain on Porn. If you look it up, more people tend to watch porn when they're single than when they're in relationships. A lot doesn't mean that no relationships watch porn, okay? Relationships can use it for a myriad of reasons, and a lot of it can be romantic and lovely and lustful and just do whatever you guys need to do. But let's just say, for example, that you're single right now, okay? And you're watching a lot of porn. Your goal could be to find yourself a girlfriend or a boyfriend. So that's your desired long-term goal or that's your desired um, desired future, okay? A, a, a positive future for yourself that's better than the current present state. Wouldn't that mean then that if your goal is to get that, then it would be better for you to give up the porn in the short term because that's probably ruining or temporarily reducing your sex drive that could be utilized better to find someone and give that sex drive to someone else. So I think that would be a really interesting way to go about it. Essentially what I'm trying to say is that you can reduce your addictive tendencies by envisioning a better goal for yourself that that little addictive tendency won't find appeal in so if it's like if it's like um you want to you have an issue with uh eating too much ice cream okay rather than trying not to eat as much ice cream start thinking more about what kind of life you would have to live to lit to live for you to for you to not have the issue of addictive ice cream. So it's kind of like, well, I should stop eating all this 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 ice cream. It's like, yeah, that's one way of looking at it. That's kind of like the negative side of it. Or you could look at it as, well, I actually want a six pack. Well, you can't get a six pack if you keep uh, if you keep eating all that ice cream. Okay, obviously I'm speaking in generalizations, but try to move towards the area that's going to give you positive emotion and fill you up so that you keep going into a positive direction, as opposed to pushing down one side so you start to feel bad about yourself all the time. There was a lot of ranting there. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, have a look at the meaning graph. You'll see that when you have a when you're living a fulfilled life with that that desired future in mind, you have this chronic state where it's kind of getting better and getting better across time because the things you're doing are pragmatically getting you to where you want to be as opposed to not having that goal and you just kind of going up and down all the time. You get your bump of positive positive emotion where you can, bump, literally, a lot of people use cocaine and then you fall flat again because you, 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 don't, you don't have anything pulling you towards a desired state. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, reach out to me if you're interested in, uh, if you want to hear me talk more about that. Uh, I talk a lot about this stuff on my podcast. So if you subscribe to the MindMate podcast, you can have a listen there. Uh, like I said, though, if you wanted to email me, you can email me at mindmatecounseling at gmail.com um, and you can go from there. Cheers.